So today's topic is OSI model. OSI is nothing but open system interconnection. Okay. So before going for this topic, first we should understood about what is networking. What is network here? Network is nothing but two or more devices connected together is called as network. If I connect multiple devices together is called as network. Two or more devices connected together is called as network. What do you mean internetwork? Internetwork is nothing but network of network or multiple networks are connected or multiple networks connected together is called as internetwork. Okay. Network is nothing but two or more devices connected together is called as network here. Internetwork is nothing but multiple networks are connected together is called as internetwork. Internetwork is also called as internet. Okay, so when it comes to internet here, okay, 1980, okay, long back, 1980, okay, IBM company was there as well as Apple company also was there, okay. If IBM wants to manufacture the PC, if they want to communicate between them, yes, IBM can communicate with IBM machine, 1980. Apple can communicate with Apple machine, yes, 1980, they can be able to communicate. IBM with IBM PC can communicate. Apple with, Apple with IBM, Apple PC, they can be able to communicate. But if you want to communicate with IBM PC to the Apple PC, they cannot be able to communicate. Similarly, if you want to communicate from Apple PC to IBM PC, they are not able to communicate. 1980, they were not able to communicate. What is the reason? Similarly, this is example here. Cisco is Cisco, they can communicate. Dealing with the dealing, they can communicate. Cisco with the dealing or dealing with Cisco, they cannot be able to communicate. They were not able to communicate at all. 1980s, they are not able to. Why? Any reason for it? Here, the reason began. Okay. Each company follow the own standard of manufacturing the devices. What, whoever may be there. Okay. Whatever may be the company. They have their own standard of manufacturing the devices. IBM, they are having own standard. Apple, they are having own standard. Okay. For manufacturing the PC. So IBM they can communicate, Apple they can communicate. But IBM with Apple, Apple with IBM, they cannot be able to communicate. To overcome this one, we have reference model, network reference model available. Okay, that has been developed here. So there are two reference models have been developed. One is called as OAC model. Another one is called as TCP IP model. OAC is nothing but open system interconnection model. TCP IP is nothing but okay, transmission control protocol, internal protocol model. The TCP IP model is also called as DOD model, Department of Defense model. So, this model defined, okay, it defined how the device are communicating with each other, how the packet has been sent from one device to another device. That model represents here. How the device is communicating with each other, how the packet has been traveled from one device to another device. When it was developed, okay, the OSM model, 1984. Who developed this model? ISO. ISO developed this model. Okay. Model name is said but OSA model. ISO is nothing but International Standard Organization or in standardization. Okay. Standards for International Standard Organization or we can say Organization for International Standards. Okay. They, they developed this model called OSA model. Okay. OSA model is not a device. Okay. It's not a device at all. It's not an entity. Okay. It's not a physical entity. It's a framework. It's a blueprint. Okay. It's a framework. It's a blueprint. If any company want to manufacture any device, they have to follow the standard. Okay. We can say it's a framework or we can say it's a blueprint. If any company want to manufacture any device, they have to follow the standard. What are the standard available here? In this standard OSM model, there are seven layers or rather, seven layers. Starting with physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer and application. Seven layers are available. When you say layer here, what is inside the layer here? We have multiple protocols. Multiple protocol available in each layer. Protocol is equal to what? Okay, set of rules. Protocol is defined as set of rules. Set of rules, okay, that is called a protocol. So, when you say protocol here, they will do different different functions. So we understood here 
in the OSM model, we have seven layers available, each layer having multiple protocol. Okay, multiple protocol is they will do different different functions. So each layer will do different functions. If any company want to manufacture any device, whatever rules available there in each layer, they have to follow the same. Then only the device can be able to communicate with one device to another device. If no OSM model, okay, suppose if OSM model was not developed, what was the problem? Okay, first thing, interoperability is not possible at all. Interoperability means what? One vendor cannot be able to communicate with other vendor. Next, we can say each company they will follow the single vendor. So that means what? If I have, uh, if you want to purchase IBM computer or if I want to purchase Cisco, Cisco router, I have to purchase Cisco router, Cisco switch, Cisco cable, Cisco mod. Everything I have to purchase from Cisco only. I cannot purchase any other device. If I purchase any other device, they cannot be able to communicate. Okay. Second thing, hardware and software would have been proprietary. Proprietary means owner. Each company will become the owner for the company products. Okay. Next thing, even though we have single vendor equipments available, okay, we can say uh, uh, hardware, software, I mean, proprietary interoperability, but main problem was we, if you there is no OSM model available, there is no internet at all. Okay. If OSM model after after developed the OSM model only, the internet has, has been developed. Okay, if there is no OSM model available, global internet is not possible at all. That's all. OSM model is very, very important. Okay, good. So, OSM model, we discussed it's nothing but what? Like a seven layers are available. So, it's called as what? Layered model. Okay, when I say OSM model here, standardization. If any company want to manufacture any device, they have to follow the standard here. It's called standardization. Allow interoperability. That means one vendor can be able to communicate with other vendor, interoperable possible. Vendor can focus on the particular layer. They can focus on the particular layer. Suppose, for example, okay, we should know about which layer comes under which 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 device comes under which layer. A router operating layer 3, that is network layer, switch as well as hub operate switch as well as bridge operating layer 2, hub and repeater operate layer 1. Suppose if you want to manufacture router, I have to refer the rules available in the layer 3. Whoever may be the company, okay, might be Cisco, might be Brocade, might be Juniper, whoever may be the company, if they want to manufacture router, they have to follow the standard available in the layer 3. If they follow the standard available there in the layer 3, then they can able to communicate. If they are not following, they cannot able to communicate. Okay, so vendor can focus on the particular area, that's enough. Vendor can focus on the particular layer. Okay. So, because of that, we can easily troubleshoot also. Troubleshooting, when I say troubleshooting, we have layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. Suppose in a router or in a PC, the back side of network interface card, the light is not blinking. We understood that there is a problem with the cable or there is a problem with the network interface card. Okay. It is a layer 1 problem. Cable, network interface, all comes under layer 1 problem. Suppose in the router, if you are giving show IP interface brief command, it says that interface as well as state as well as interface information will be there. Suppose if you say up, down, up and down, the up represents what? Layer 1. Here next layer 2. If it is this layer 2 here, layer 2 is down, it may be a problem with the encapsulation problem, it may be a problem with the key play problem. Okay. So, or if you forgot to give any other command, okay, clock rate, if you forgot to give clock rate command, if there, this comes under what, layer 2 problem, we can easily identify. If the cable says up and down, okay, if, if I give show IP interface brief, brief command, if it says that output is up and down, that means that layer 2 problem, it may be a clock rate problem, it may be key poly problem, it may be encapsulation problem, okay, that is called as layer 2. Suppose you properly assign the IP address. After that also you are not able to communicate with each other. Might be you wrongly assign the IP address. Okay, might be comes at a layer 3 problem. 
So we can easily troubleshoot. Okay, whether it's a layer one problem or layer two problem or layer three problem, we can easily troubleshoot. Okay, that's the network troubleshoot. Reduce complexity. Okay, because of that, like if any company want to manage any device, they can focus on the particular layer because of that, reducing the complexity, simplify teaching and learning. Okay, that all comes under why we are going for layer model here. So one layer can communicate with the upper layer as well as the lower layer. Flat, okay, we can say flat networking here. So suppose for example, if physical layer available, they can communicate with the data link layer. If data link layer available, they can communicate with the network layer as well as physical layer. Okay. So we will go with here, what are the layers available? Application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer, seven layers available. So layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, layer 5, layer 6 and layer 7. Seven layers are available here. Okay. Here the top 3 layer, top 3 layer is called as upper layer or we can say software layer. Top 3 layer is called as upper layer or we can say software layer. Bottom 3 layer is called as lower layer or we can say hardware layer. Middle layer is said to be hot for the OSM model. Hot. It's a hot of OSM model here. So, upper layer is also called as software layer. Why software layer here? It has been implemented using software. Lower layer is also called as what? Okay, hardware layer. It has been implemented using hardware as well as software also. In the upper layer, is mainly for managing application level functions. So that means what? Like a programmer, developer, testing, they concentrate on upper layers. Okay, that means what? Application layer, presentation layer, association. They can concentrate upper layer. Okay, for a application developer, a programmer, they can come. But when it comes to network engineer, a system engineer, okay, security engineer, they have to concentrate on bottom four layers. What is the layer available here? Physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer. They have to consider bottom, bottom four layers here. So because of that, they say control the end-to-end -end transport of data has been happened in the okay, lower layers. End-to-end -end transport of data has been happened in the lower layer. So we understood that layers has been divided. Okay, upper layer as well as software layer. Upper layer is also called as okay, software layer. Okay, sorry, upper layer as well as uh, lower layer. Upper layer is also called as software layer. Lower layer is also called as hardware layer. Middle layer is the part of the OSM model. Upper layer has been implemented using software. Lower layer has been implemented using software and hardware. Upper layer has been managing the application level functions. Okay, lower layer mainly for controlling end-to-end -end transport of data. Because of that, application developer or programmer, they can concentrate on upper layer. System engineer, network engineer, security engineer, they can concentrate on bottom layers. How to remember the order? Okay, the order is very important. How to remember the order here? So the order, okay, you can directly remember. Okay, like we can say, uh, if we start from bottom here, physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, Okay, presentation layer, application layer or top from application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physics. Yes, we can remember. But we have some shortcuts available. So here you can see shortcuts here. Like a, all people seems to need data processing. If you go from top to bottom. One more option, bottom to top. Okay, if you want to remember. The first letter you can see. Please do not throw sauce and pizza away. This order and next order we can say please do not touch small pet animals. Okay, the first letter you can say. Okay, next thing please do not touch street pet animals. Okay, then we can say one more thing. Next one on the top to bottom on the Pradesh state, on the Pradesh state, Tamil Nadu district Pondicherry. Okay, this also there is last one actually we can say here. Please do not touch Shalini Prasajit, whatever may be. Okay, whichever is easy for you, you can remember. But the order is very important. So we will go with one by one layer. Okay. Application layer. 
first we will see about application layer. What is application layer? So when I say application layer, okay, if you want to open any website, if you want to open any website, so what is required for you to open to open any website here in your laptop? What is required for you? First thing you can have a browser. Okay. So browser we have multiple browser available, right? Okay, Google Chrome, Firefox. Okay, then uh, what are the lot of browser, Internet Explorer, Edge. Okay, lot of browser. What are maybe the browser? Okay, that is called as application. Okay, if you want to open any website, you are opening application. As a user, you are interacting with the application. Browser. Open a browser, typing google.com or dynamic.com. Anything you are typing. You are interacting with the browser. What browser will do? Browser will interact with the, okay, browser is nothing but application. You are interacting with the application, actually. Application will interact with the application protocol. For web server, what is the protocol? HTTP. So, application will interact with the HTTP protocol or HTTPS protocol and provide the result for you. Okay, and provide the result. What is the result? It's opening a web page. So, for example, here, www.dynamicnetworkinginstitute.com. It's open a web page. Okay, so it's open a web page, right? Like a, you are interacting with the browser. Okay, might be your application. Right? Application, what application will do? Application will interact with the application protocol and provide the result for you. Okay, that's what application layer is all about. So, application layer is nothing but a user interface layer. It is the interface between user and the application. It is the interface between user and the application protocol or application. So, what application level do? Okay, what purpose we are using the network? The result it shows, right? Where the result we can be or we, we can able to see? In the, in the application only. So, which interface has been used to view the result? That is what application is called. Application level charge. As a user, you are interacting with the application. And application will interact with the application protocol and provide the result for you. Whatever result you want, that has been displayed. Okay, that has been provided by the application layer. Okay, so we have multiple application example here. Okay, HTTP. If you want to open a web, web browser, HTTP protocol require for you. If you want to open email, three protocols available, SMTP, POP3, and IML. Okay, any protocol. So as a user, okay, suppose for example, if you want to open a web page, okay, email. So what is the application? We are looking for, okay, uh, Outlook. As a user, you are interacting with the Outlook. What Outlook will do? Outlook will interact with the protocol. It may be SMTP protocol, okay, POP3, IMM protocol and provide the result for you. Okay. So, next thing, file transfer. For file center, we have multiple application available. Example, Fuzzilla. Fuzzilla is nothing but file transfer application here. You, you, are, you want to transfer the file. You are interacting with the application, Fuzzilla application. What Fuzzilla application will do? Interact with the protocol, FTP protocol and provide the result for you. Remote login. I want to log in remotely. Okay. The device which is available there in the US. I want to log in. Okay. What is the application you are looking for? It may be Teratum Putty. We are interacting with the application. Application will interact with the application protocol. What is the protocol? SSH or Telnet. They can provide log into the remote devices. As a user, we are interacting with the application. Application will interact with the application protocol and provide the result for you. It's called as application functionality. It's also called as desktop layer. So, example here you can see application functionality, the user opening a browser, typing www.dynamicnetworkinginstitute.com. So, he's getting a web page. How the web page is getting here? So, the request. What is the request? See, they send a user is sending HTTP request. HTTP request has been sent from source destination. Sent from source destination and listen on the port number 80. Then after that, HTTP reply has been sent from destination to source. Once they received the reply here, automatically they can able to reply has been received here. Automatically they can able to view the web page here. We have multiple service available, right? What is service available here? HTTP service, FTP is a service here. Along the port number you can see HTTP service port number eighty, FTP port number twenty twenty one. SMTP port number 25, Telnet port number 23, TFTP port number 67. 
Next, presentation layer. The name, name itself indicates presentation. Presentation layer responsible for presenting data in the standard format. Presenting data in the standard format. So, in a web page, in web, in a web page, okay, uh, image is available. In some web page, we can say image available, audio file available, video file available, text available. They are in the different different format. Okay, they are in the different different format here. Okay, example here. Okay, as a user, you are opening a laptop or desktop here. Okay, you want to try to login to server which is available in the different location. Might be you can assume a okay, server here. The server, okay, uh, text available. The server text available. Welcome to some text is available here. Audio file, some audio files available here. Example, audio file, video file available. So, audio file available here, video file available. They are in the different different format. For example, so video file available in the JPEG, video file available in the okay, MPEG format, MP4 format. Audio file available there in the AVA format or we can say MP3 format. Okay, our text file, text is available there in the RTF, rich text format, rich text format here. So, when you try to open any web page here, whatever format available here that has been okay displayed in your system here. Exactly whatever format available there, same thing has been displayed here. How it happened here? This can be done by the presentation layer. So, presentation layer responds for presenting data in the standard format. What are maybe? Suppose the here the image file if it is available there in the form of JPEG format. Okay, image file also available here. They are available there in the form of JPEG format. Whatever format available here, okay, JPEG format, whatever format available here, same thing has been displayed to you. Okay. So we understood that. Okay, presentation layer functionality is nothing but presenting the data in the standard format. Okay, in the website might be you are saving the website in the different form. Image file, image has been saved in the form of okay different format, PNG format. If you say same format has been okay displayed to you, that can be taken care of by the presentation layer. And also it is taking care of syntax and formatting. Okay, when I say syntax here, your font size might be you are having a font size of 14 font size of 14 here and uh, some font size of 14 here might be you can say here okay you are having Arial 14 Arial Arial here okay bold and also you can see italic uh, italic underline whatever format you have available there in the website same format has been taken care of by the presentation layer. That means it taking care of syntax and formatting also. That also done by the presentation layer. Next thing, if two device does not support the same format, you in the server which is available has been available there in the form. Okay, server has been using a OS of uh, Linux. Okay, Amazon Linux they are having. Server has been available there in the Linux here. Linux. In the, Linux, in the Linux machine only, you store the uh, website. But you are trying to open, you are trying to open the web page via Android mobile phone or trying to open via MacBook. Okay, MacBook here. I trying to open via Windows machine. Trying to open via Windows also. What or maybe? Okay, the conversion and translation service has been taken care by the presentation layer okay from this format sir this format is this format okay i have to convert right okay one format to another format the conversion has been taken care by the presentation okay might be from linux to linux to mac here linux to windows linux to android okay that can be taken care by the presentation layer okay so we understood here 
presentation layer responsible for presenting data in the standard format okay so for example you are opening a website you are opening a website here okay uh, www dynamic networking here it's opening a web page so opening a web page here you can see the web page has image file available audio file available there video file available text also available right they are in the different different formats that all everything has been taken care by the presentation layer presentation layer respond for presenting data in this standard format data in this standard format here it taking care of how the data has to be represented to the user okay and also taking care of formatting and syntax also formatting and syntax if two device does not support the same format if two device does not support the same format conversion and translation service has been taken care by the presentation layer so when you say image here images are in different different formats actually jpeg gif tiff bmp format audio file mp3 format mp4 format wave format available video file mp4 format movie format eva media formats available text format rtf district format asia multiple formats available whatever format the website has been developed actually same format has been provided to you that can be taken care by the presentation layer apart from that taking care of encoding and decoding encryption and decryption compression and decompression encoding and decoding so the data okay which is available there in plain text we are doing encoding that data will be used for some purpose that's called a encoding here okay might be example you can say machine in the computer we are conversion of your data into another format right that is called a encoding okay which has been understood by your machine that is called a encoding here okay it has been used by other process that is called a encoding encryption decryption mainly for security purpose when you say security here you are typing sending the data in the plain text format it will be converted into cipher text plain text will be converted to cipher text that is said be encryption okay reverse is nothing but decryption compression okay so size size of the file has been compressed the compression here session layer session layer is suffer for session establishment session maintenance and session termination session session layer responsible for session establishment session maintenance and session termination logically separate the session that is comes at a session layer logically separate the session is called a session layer here. so what is meant session layer here we'll discuss session establishment everything we'll discuss here suppose for example okay example we can take a browsing center or college lab actually so multiple persons available here so multiple pc pc has been connected to switch here from the switch is connected to modem from router from the router is connected to isp is in the internet service provider okay internet is connected with okay facebook in the internet only we have multiple servers available right facebook server youtube server gmail ebay server multiple server available there in the internet okay example here four pc available here okay pc1 pc2 pc3 and pc4 here pc1 okay he is opening okay facebook pc2 he is opening youtube pc3 he is opening ebay pc4 is opening gmail all the requests what are the requests here facebook request youtube request email ebay request here gmail all the requests have been forwarded to switch here okay this from the switch it has been forwarded to router the modem from there it has been forwarded to isp in the internet in the isp okay you check where the servers are available okay so facebook server youtube server gmail lot of servers available in the internet right the request has been forwarded to the internet here the request has been forwarded to the internet here to respect the server here from the server they are responding back okay facebook they are responding youtube they are responding gmail they are responding ebay also responding all the requests has been okay all the response has been coming to the isp internet service provider then coming to the modem okay again it comes to the switch here but after coming here exactly if you are opening facebook you can able to see only facebook page if you are opening youtube you can see only youtube page 
If you're opening eBay, you can see only UUD. Opening Gmail means you can able to see only Gmail. Oh, here, if you open Facebook here, I cannot get YouTube, right? How it happened? How this was happened here in the way? That can be taken care of by the session layer here. What do you mean session layer? What session layer will do? When you open any website, Facebook, suppose for example, you're typing, you're opening a browser, facebook.com, you're typing. Once you open a Facebook page here, automatically, a session ID will be created. For, that means what? You're opening a web page, for that one, it create a session ID. For each website, it will have different different session ID. Session ID will be different. Once it open a session ID here, it, it create a virtual link. From where to where? From source to decision. It create a virtual link, also called as virtual circuit. Okay, from where to where? Source to destination. Okay, so this is nothing but called session establishment. Okay, session has been established. This is called a session. So, when you open any browser, okay, browser and type in google.com or facebook.com, anything you are opening, any website, a session ID will be created. Based on the session ID, a virtual circuit has been created from source to decision. A virtual circuit has been created from source to decision. This is called as what? Okay, session, virtual circuit has been created, right? This is called as session establishment. Okay, how long you are going to use the session? Might be for half an hour, might be for one hour, might be for two hours. It's up to you. That is called a sort session maintenance. How long you are going to use? It's nothing but what? session maintenance. When you are going to close it, after completion everything. Okay, you are just clicking and closing this one. Okay, this is called a sort session termination. Terminating the session. Okay, session establishment, session maintenance, session terminating session. Similarly, if you are opening multiple web pages here, for, for example, you are opening Facebook, you are opening YouTube also, okay, and the main time you are opening e Gmail also. At a time, this from single PC itself, you are opening multiple sessions. Okay, so you are opening Cisco.com from single PC, multiple browser, okay, but multiple tab, you are opening multiple session. Okay, that means multiple website. That means what? For each website, different different session ID will be created. Okay, for each website, different different session ID. So, different different session ID will create a different different virtual circuit to the particular destination. Circuit has been created. This is nothing but what? Multiple session establishment, particular circuit. The session has been created, right? They say all the sessions are logically separated. Okay, there is no link between them. Logical separate. That's what you can be able to open multiple website from a single PC because all the requests has been converted into what? Okay, session ID. All the then for, by using session ID, you create a virtual circuit. The virtual circuit are logically separated. Okay, logically separated. That's called a, that's all done by the session layer. So you can see here session layer responds for session establishment. How long you are okay opening a session, session maintenance, how long you are going to use the session, session termination, closing the session. And also logically separate the session. That is also comes out as session layer. Suppose if the session is broken, okay, this layer attempt to recover the session. Okay, sometimes you can feel it actually. Like when you open a website, okay, in the middle of the uh, middle of the working condition, sometimes you are you cannot able to see the web page properly. Okay, after a few seconds, automatically the web page can be getting clearly right. It's so all comes done by the session layer. Okay. So even though the session is broken, this layer attempt to record the session. Okay. All done by session layer. So apart from that, it's taking care of simplex, half duplex, and full duplex also. Simplex is nothing but one way communication. Half duplex, two way communication, but one at a time. Full duplex, two way communication, both at a time. Example for simplex communication, FM transmission, TV transmission. That means what? One-way communication. We cannot revert, we cannot revert back. One-way communication. How to plus two-way communication, both at time. Sorry, two-way communication, one at time. Example, walkie talkie. Full duplex, two-way communication, both at time. Example, mobile phones. Next, transport layer. So transport layer is not responsible for 
transporting the data. Okay, transport layer is not responsible for transporting. Transporting that means so routing has been done by the network layer, not transport layer. Okay, network layer will do routing part. Okay, so then what is the purpose of transport layer? Transport layer responsible for end to end connectivity or end to end communication, end to end connectivity or end to end communication. Whether the communication happened through reliable or non reliable, okay, reliable communication or unreliable communication, okay, that comes under transport layer. Whether the data has been used, data has been communication has been happened through reliable or unreliable. So, there are two categories available here, okay, one is about connection oriented and connection less. Connection oriented is about what, okay, connection established before data is sent. Connection nothing but no connection between, okay, no connection before data is sent. So, we will see here, when I say communication happen through reliable communication or unreliable communication, reliable means what? When you send any data from source to decision, you will get an acknowledgement back, acknowledgement. When you receive an acknowledgement, you understood that the data has been properly reached the decision. That comes a reliable communication, okay. For example, post call. Okay, postcard and all initial days, they attach the acknowledgement slip also. When you transfer, okay, when you send the postcard to somebody else, when you send the letter from so one place to another place, okay, once they receive the letter, they will send the acknowledge back, acknowledgement back. That means what? Okay, once we receive the acknowledgement, we understood that our letter has been properly reached the destination. Okay, that is meaning here. That is called as reliable communication. Whenever your data is sending any data, Okay, automatically when the data has been reached to the destination, you will get the acknowledgement from destination to source. This is called as reliable communication. Unreliable communication, okay, just without, okay, without acknowledgement or we can say just you are forwarding the data one place to another. You do not understood whether the data has been properly reached or not. Okay, in reliable communication, if you are not re receiving the acknowledgement, it wait for a few seconds, if you are not receiving the acknowledgement, it will resend the data once again, resend the data once again. That is called a reliable communication. Okay, but under reliable communication, there is no resending at all. You are continuously going to send the data. So then where we are using reliable, where we are using under reliable communication? Almost 90 to 95% of the communication happen through reliable. You are sending an email or opening a browser, whatever you are doing, it all comes under reliable communication. Then why we are having under reliable communication? Why we are in 5% unreliable coming? Why we are having? Okay. But live telecast, live transmission, okay, broadcasting, they are doing something like a telecasting the football match, telecasting the cricket match, they are doing a live telecast. All comes under what? Unreliable communication. Okay. For reliable, they are using what? TCP protocol. For unreliable, they are using UDP protocol. They are using UDP protocol here. So, when you say connection oriented and connectionless, what is the connection or connectionless? So, if you want to send the data from one place to another place, first thing, what do you do? First thing, three way handshaking will happen. Three way handshaking process will happen. What do you mean three way handshaking? First thing, source will send sync packet, synchronous packet from source to destination. Okay, from destination to source, okay, uh, SYNAC packet, sync plus acknowledgement has been sent from destination to source. Okay, again, I will send acknowledgement packet. After the three way handshaking, I will send the data from source decision. That is called a connection oriented. Okay, connection oriented means what? It is not like a cable is connecting, sir. Connection oriented, cable is not connecting, connection, it is not the case. Connection oriented is nothing but before sending the data, it has to follow the three, three way handshaking process. What will be three way handshaking? First thing, source decision, they are going to send sync packet. Then destination to source, snack packet or sync plus acknowledgement. Again, source destination, acknowledgement packet. This process is called connection oriented. Okay. So, connect, what is my connection less? Connection less, okay. Connection less is nothing but, okay. Without the three way connection, that out is directly forwarding. It comes under connection less. The protocol which used in connection oriented, connection less, the protocol which used in reliable, unreliable. TCP has been used in reliable communication. TCP has been used in connection oriented. UDP has been used in uh, unreliable communication. UDP has been used in 
connection this apart from that transport layer response for segmentation segmentation sequence and reassembly and flow control segmentation sequence and reassembly and flow control okay this can be done by transport layer segmentation sequence and reassembly and flow control apart from that error control also so we'll discuss all the things one by one before that very important tcp ip what is the difference here tcp is nothing but transmission control protocol udp user datagram protocol tcp connection oriented udp connectionless okay tcp acknowledgement okay udp no acknowledgement tcp reliable udp unreliable communication okay tcp is fast actually slow actually because it waits for acknowledgement but udp is very fast it does not wait for acknowledgement here the port number for tcp 6 year the port number of udp 78 what are services okay comes under tcp it is a protocol right what are services comes under tcp http ftp smtp okay this all comes under still we have a lot of other things also available okay we can say a lot of other protocol http ftp smtp then we can say uh, SN, okay uh, HTTPS, Telnet, SSH, all comes under DC protocol. But when you go for UDP protocol, we have DNS, DHCP, TFTP, SNMP, SNMP also comes under UDP protocol. So this is called a three-way handshake. Okay. Before sending any data, first thing what I will do, I will send sync packet. Then I will get sync plus acknowledging packet. Again, I am sending acknowledging packet. Okay. So after that only I will go for what? Establishing connection. This is called as what? Okay. Three way handshaking process. So we will go with other functionality of a transport layer here. So we discuss about there are uh, four fun other functionality right? Segmentation, sequence and reassembling, flow control as well as error control. So first of all what is segmentation is all about here? Suppose if you want to send any data for example hello how are you i want to send the data hello how are you i want to send the data what has happened here if you want to forward the hello how are you packet i cannot forward it directly right okay hello how are you i cannot be able to forward directly so what i will do here hello separately how separately or separately you separately and customer separately okay data one by one i will forward here hello separately you separately or separately customer separately. okay hello how are you separate one by one okay sequence reassembly okay what will happen here sequence reassembly okay sequence reassembly i am sending the order okay hello how are you hello separately how separately all separately usually i am sending one by one here but what will happen here okay uh, if i suppose if i send like a different order if it goes in same order it properly reads the destination if it goes in same order it properly reads suppose if it goes in different order here you first here hello second or next Okay, how is next here? Kusma separate. In this case, what will happen here? What will happen here? Okay, the order will be different, right? You can say what how I am getting here. You, hello, how, or and Kusma I am getting, right? So different order I am getting here. Okay, different order. So to work on this one, in sequence and reassembling, what we are going to do after segmenting, after segmenting, we are going to assign some number, sequence number we are going to assign. Suppose if I have five data available, okay, segment, when I segment here, hello, how are you, how, hello, how are you, question mark here, five segments are available, so I can mark it as one by five, two by five, three by five, four by five, five by five. I can forward one by one, okay, how, hello forward, how forward, or forward, you forward, question mark, you forward, okay. So even if it goes in same order, Follow separately, how separately, or separately, you customer separately, finally you and how customer, I can get in proper order. Even if I send in different order also, you different path, different order also, different path also, I can rearrange it to original order by using the sequence number. Rearrange it to original order by using sequence number. Next thing, error, con error correction here. After correct correction, we will discuss our flow control, error correction here. So, error correction, okay, you are sending the data, 
follow separately, how separately, how separately, you separately, you are sending the data. Suppose in case, if the, any data is missing, when well, forwarding, if any data is missing here, what will happen here? Here, how is missing here, right? Okay, how is missing here? Okay, segment is missing here. So, for this one, what I will do? I will resend the data once again. Because I am not going to get the acknowledgement for this data. If I am not getting acknowledgement, for this data only, I am resending the data once again. So that I can get the original image. This comes under error correction. Flow control mechanism. Flow control mechanism. In the flow control, okay, we have sender available here. Receiver. Okay, sender and receiver available here. So what happened here? Sender, they were going to forward the data. Sender is going to forward some data here. Okay. So, he is going to forward some data. From here, it is going to forward. Lot of data is sharing. So, he is going to forward the data from here. From source destination here, he is going to forward the data. So, it goes from here to here. When it reaches here, it will be stored in the buffer. First of all, it will be stored in the buffer here. Buffer means what? It is a memory where it has been stored. Okay. Buffer is a kind of memory where it has been stored here. Once stored in the buffer, it will start processing the data here. Okay, first data process here, second data process here, third data process. Okay, one by one, it, it getting processed. One by data getting processed. Okay, all the data getting processed here. Now buffer is free here. Okay, good. Suppose, for example, if you are sending huge amount of data, okay, if you are sending huge amount of data here. From source destination, what will happen? Buffer cannot be able to handle the data. Okay, there is a problem here. If you are sending huge amount of data, so if you are sending huge amount of data, what will happen here? If you are sending huge amount of data, buffer cannot be able to handle this data here. Okay, it is coming here. But buffer cannot be able to handle the data. Okay, so uh, re receiver cannot be able to handle the data. So you are sending huge amount of data here. Okay, I can take here this data you are forwarding from here here. So processing here. Okay, receiver processing the data here. They are not able to handle the huge amount of data. Okay, in this case, what will happen here? Okay, so if you are continuing if, again, if you are sending the same data here. Okay, what will happen here? Okay, again. You are sending the data from here. Again, you are sending the data from here. So, more data has been coming from source ratio. What will happen here? If more data is coming here, buffer is full. Right? Buffer is completely full. More data, buffer is completely full. If buffer is full, what will happen here? It is getting overflow. That means packet is getting lost here. So, a lot of packet is getting lost. Okay. So, you are getting your packet has been getting lost here. They are not able to process, right? It's overflow. New data is coming. If new data is coming here, okay. So they are not able to handle the data. Okay. They are not able to handle it. New data is coming. Buffer is already full, right? They are not able to handle the data. The, what will happen here? Packet loss. To work on this one, okay, what we are going to do? So to work on this, what we are going to do? That's what we are going to see here. So I will tell you here once again. So we have transmitter available here as well as we have a receiver. Okay, so you are process, you are sending the data from transmitter to receiver. As sender to receiver, you transmit data here. So what will happen if you transmit data? Okay, so yes. What buffer will do? Okay, receiver will do. Take the packet from the buffer and process the data. Suppose if you are transmit more number of data. Okay, yes, processing. Again, if you are handling more number of data, it's processing here. Okay, this buffer is already full. Again, if we are sending more data here, what will happen? The packet is getting lost here. Okay, to work on this one, we have a method called not ready and ready signal. Or ready and not ready signal. Not ready and ready. In not ready signal, what will happen here? Not ready, ready, what will happen? Once the buffer is full, once the buffer is full, okay, it send a not ready signal from 
destination to source. It send a not ready signal from destination to source. I am not ready. The signal has been forwarded from destination. That means receiver to source here, sender. Once it receive the signal, not ready signal, once receive the not ready signal, what will happen here? It stop processing the data. Stop it. Completely stop processing the data. It wait. It wait until the buffer is free. It wait until the buffer is free. Waiting. So once the buffer is free, once the buffer is free, okay, checking right here. Once the buffer is free, okay, it's all the process here. Okay, all the process has been processed here. Okay, process here, all the data has been processed here. Completely, the buffer is free right now. Okay, buffer free. So once again, what will happen here? It send a signal called ready from destination source. Send a signal called ready from destination source. So once the signal has been ready right now, okay, signal has been reached here. Again, what happened here? It start processing the data here. It start processing the data. Okay, this is called as what? Ready or not ready signal or not ready or ready signal. Here. In this case, what is the problem happened? Okay, first thing here, there are two problems available here. There are two problems are there. One problem is setting that delay. Okay, so we have to wait. We have to wait until the buffer is free. Okay, so we have completely the buffer is occupied. Okay, completely the data is occupying the buffer, right? Okay, we have to wait until the buffer is free. First problem. Second problem, packet loss. So, what is a packet loss here? Okay, what how packet loss will happen here? Second problem, packet loss. So, we already know that data buffer is okay, completely full, right? Once buffer is full here, it's forwarding a signal. Okay, what signal here? Not ready signal. Not a signal is flowing from okay, destination to source here. But before reaching, okay, this is coming, destination source, data is coming. Not ready signal is coming from destination source. In the meantime, whatever data I am forwarding, that everything is lost here. Because we, the, if the if the this, this signal, not a signal, reaches my source here only, I will stop transmitting. Before okay, the data has been before this not a signal reaches my source here, whatever data I have forwarded, everything is getting lost here. Two problems. How we are going to overcome here? Okay, once again repeat here. So, first initially in the not ready signal, ready and not ready signal, you are forwarding the data. Okay, you are forwarding data. Yes, buffer is one by one. It start processing the data here. Okay, buffer is full here. Again, completely buffer is full. So, they are not able to handle the data. Suppose in the case, you again you are forwarding the data from here to here, what will happen? The overflow and the packet will be getting lost. To overcome this one, you are sending a signal called not ready signal from source to destination. The destination source. When I mean, the signal reaches my source here, what sender will do? Sender will stop transmitting data. Okay. So once okay, the buffer is free. Once the buffer is free, what will happen? Again, it tra start transmitting data here. But how it will start transmitting? Again, it has to inform saying that ready here. So ready, it has to say ready here. So once this ready signal has been reached my destination uh, source here, again it start transmitting the data. Here two problems are there. What is the problem here? Overflow. Okay. Before the signal, not ready signal reaches my sender here, whatever the data I have forward, everything getting lost. First problem. Second problem, delay. I have to wait. Okay. Until the buffer is free. Two problems are there. To overcome this one, we are going for what? Windowing method. Okay. Windowing method we are choosing. So we will see. Window, what is the windowing method we choose here? Windowing method. In window method, we'll decide. Source will decide. Okay, this is window method here. Source and destination will have some agreement. So what says the destination? What destination says here? Okay, here receiver says that I can able to handle only one data. Receiver say I can able to handle only one data. Handle only one data. What source will say? Source will send only one data. Is that what receiver will do? Okay, receiver will send acknowledgement back. 
Again, I'll send only one data. Receiver send acknowledgement. Again, I'll send only one data. Receiver send acknowledgement. This method is nothing but what? Okay, windowing method. Here, they are agreeing with the window size of, window size of what? Window size, window size is nothing but what? It's nothing but one here. Windows is nothing but one here. Here, the window size is called 1, right? Suppose, for example, if the window size is 3, what will happen? So, I will forward 3 data. If window size is 3, I will forward 3 data. Okay, here you can see window size. Suppose, for example, if I have window size equal to 3 here, I will forward 3 data here. So, okay, here I will forward 3 data. Okay, receiver side acknowledgement, 1 acknowledgement here. So, in this case, if window size is equal to 1, what will happen here? We see here window size equal to 1. So window size equal to 1 here. Window size equal to 1 here. Sender will send only one data. Receiver acknowledge back. Okay, sender is sending one data. Receiver acknowledge back. Again, sender is sending only one data. Receiver acknowledge back. Okay, sender is sending sending only one data. Receiver acknowledge back. One data. Receiver acknowledge back. Suppose for example, window size 3 here. Sender will send 3 data here. Window will acknowledge that. Sender will send three data here. So window here is acknowledge that. This is called as what? Okay, windowing method. So flow control, there are two methods available: ready or not ready signal and windowing method. Can show you here. So trans okay, network layer. Next is network layer. Network layer response for routing the packet. Okay, routing the packet. Routing the packet from source to destination here. Routing the data packets here. Route the packet. So, best path determination. If I have multiple paths available, which path I have to choose? Best, best path determination has been happened, taken care by the network layer. Best path determination. Logical addressing. This all comes under transport layer here. So, transport response for routing the packet from source relationship, best path determination, logical addressing. So, for example, here I have a router available, okay, another router here, multiple path available from source relationship here. You can see here. So, I can go here this way from here to here, also I can go directly, also I can go here or I can go with this way, this path here to reach my destination or I can go with another path here to reach my destination. There are multiple paths available from source destination here. Okay, this I can assume here, this is my source here. Source and destination here. So we have multiple path available. Okay, I can go with this path, or I can go with this path, or I can go with this path. But which is the best path here? Okay, you can assume here. Okay, this router has very short path, right? So only two routers available. Okay, I can choose here. This is my best path. This can be done by the network layer here. So for this one, we are using a protocol called a routing protocol. Routing protocol finding the best path by using multiple protocols. Okay. So we have like a RIP protocol, IGRP, EHRP, we have example for routing protocol which has been used for finding the best path. What about router protocol? Router protocol is nothing but carrying the information from source destination. Source destination. I have some information available here. I want to carry from here to here. Source that can be taken care by the router protocol. Example for router protocol, IP patient 4, IP patient 6. IPX are example for router protocol. You can see here network, network layer uh, respond for route the packet from source decision, route the packet from source decision, best path determination, okay, finding the best path, logical addressing. So, and one more important, 
So it has been used for connecting two different network. So transport layer is used for connecting two different network. Transporting of data between the network, two different network. Okay. Uh, then there are two protocol available: routing protocol and router protocol. Routing protocol finding the best path. Okay. We have RAP, IGRP, EAGRP, and OSP of example for routing protocol. Router protocol. Okay, example I can say IP patient 4, IP patient 6, Apple Top, TCP, UDP, all example routed protocol. The main part here, network layer transporting the data between the network. Suppose if you want to transport data within the network, which layer responds for it? That comes under data link layer. Transport data within the network comes under data link layer. Transport data Within the network comes under network layer. So when I say here transport layer, we completed now network layer. So data uh, sorry, network layer responds for transport of data within the network. Data link layer responds for transport data within the network. Next thing, so data link layer responds for what? Responsible for MAC addressing. Here it helps to communicate within the LAN. Okay, in a LAN connection, it helps to communicate. Okay, that comes under data link layer. There are two sublayers available here. Data link layer again divided into two sublayers. That is nothing but LLC and MAC. LLC is nothing but logical link control. MAC is nothing but media access control. Logical link control, media access control. When you say logical link control, it is taking care of WAN protocols. Like upper layer, taking care of WAN protocol. So we have some WAN protocol available, point to point protocol, HDLC, frame relay that can be done by the LLC here. MAC layer taking care of physical addressing, physical addressing that means what MAC address. Apart from that other functionality you can say error detection, error detection has been done by the data link layer, error correction has been done by the transport layer. So, the devices which comes under data link layer, switch and bridge, the device which comes under network layer, router, the device which comes under physical layer, hub, hub as well as repeater. So, finally physical layer, physical layer here, physical layer responds for electrical mechanical check. Okay, it includes what? Cables, connectors, interface, all comes under physical layer. Cables, we have multiple cable available, right? Two separate cable, coaxial cable, optical fiber cable. Connectors, we have RJ45, RJ11, DB9, DB15, DB60. Interface, NAC and WAC. Here, RJ45, register jack 45, which has been used in LAN cable. That is two separate cable. RJ11 has been used in telephone lines. DB9 is a connector which has been used for connecting your console cable to the PC. Okay, the console cable you can see DB9, DB is nothing but database. DB is nothing but database. So DB15 as well as DB60 also available. DB15 we can view in the trans receiver. Okay, trans receiver, DB15 is available. DB60, the serial port which you are connecting, right? Serial port is nothing but DB60. 60 means so, 60 pins are available there in the Okay, uh, serial cable. So, interface card, NAC and WAC, network interface card, WAN interface card. Data is converted into binary. Okay, zeros or one here. Again, converted binary here. So, here, the cable, multiple cables are there, right? The data has been forwarded into separate cable in the form of electrical signal. In coaxial cable, the data will be forwarded in the form of light. Okay. So, the devices which comes under physical layers are repeater, hub, as well as modem, cables, all comes under physical layer here. Here, encapsulation, decapsulation. If you want to forward the data from source decision, it has to flow via multiple layers here. Initially, the data will be available in the form of, okay, in the application layer is represented data here. This is called a sort of protocol data unit. The data, data and data here, when it comes to session layer, session layer here, here also again data, transport layer is called a segment, 
here it's form of packet here again frame and bits the information which is available in the physical layer okay or the information which is available in the data layer, layer we have to know so physical layer the information which is available in the physical layer is called a bits here the information which is available in the data link layer is called a frame the information which is available in the network layer is called a packet here the information which is available there in the transport layer is called a segment instead of saying information here we can say pdu pdu protocol data unit which is available there in the application layer presentation layer session layer is called as data pdu protocol data unit which is available there in the transport layer is called a segment here pdu protocol data unit which is available in the network layer is called a packet okay then data layer frame here finally bits how the information has been forwarded from upper layer to lower layer here initially the information will be available there in the form of data in the application layer presentation layer as well as session layer when it comes to transport layer tcp header has been added here okay tcp header has been added here okay then again when it comes to network layer ip header that is but network header has been added network header is also called as ip header has been added when it comes to data link layer here both header as well as tail also added head as well as tail okay head is something but what mac okay mac layer mac header as well as lsc header has been added tail is something but fcs frame check sequence has been added okay finally the information has been flow okay in the form of what bits okay the converted into bits in the form of okay uh, physical layer here suppose for example you want to transfer the information one one pc to another pc here okay so you want to forward some information from one pc to another pc here so the information which is available here okay the information which is available here it comes to your application layer correct right? this is called as what data when it comes to presentation layer here in application layer application header has been added okay application header has been added here in each layer we have multiple header has been added application header has been added here okay so again when it comes to okay a presentation layer so data has been moved from here to here right it comes to presentation layer presentation header has been added Similarly, when it comes to session layer, okay, session header has been added. Here, session header has been added. Similarly, when it comes to transport layer, TCP header has been added. Okay, TCP header has been added here. Okay, network layer, network header has been added. Data layer, data header, header has been added. Again, the information will be converted. The physical layer, the information will be converted in the form of what? The converted in the form of okay bits here. So bits means what? Zeros or one. Okay, that's the bits here. Continuous bits will be available in the form of zeros or one. So one zero zero one zero here. Sorry, one. Okay, bits will be available in the form of bits here. Yeah. So after that, what will happen here? We are connecting a cable, right? The network interface card has been connected to a PC, right? One piece to another PC, we connect with cable. Network interface card. Okay, might be we are connecting with the name cable or network interface card here. So this network interface card will convert your bits into voltage. So the network interface card only converting the bits into voltage. So here the information is available, right? So information is available in the form of what? One zero 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 one zero zero. It is the information, right? So it converted bits into voltage here. How the voltage will be there? You can see here. High first thing one here, right? One is about high voltage. High voltage here. Next zero, low voltage. Again zero, low voltage. Again one here, high voltage. Again zero, low voltage here. Okay. Again one, high voltage. So this information has been transferred from your one device to another device through a cable here. So it will be in the form of electrical signal. When you are going with 
to separate table. Okay, this information reaches your network interface card of other PC. Again, this network interface card will convert your voltage into bits. Okay, so what will happen here? First the voltage is here, high, right? High means 1 here. 1. Next, 0, low. Again, 0, low here. Again, high, 1. Again, 0, low. Again, high, 1. Okay, so this is nothing but what? Conversion, bits in, okay, here, voltage has been converted to bits here. Okay, from physical layer, the here, it has been grouped. Okay, the bits has been grouped. It will be formed in power. Okay, it will be formed as frame here. Again, from here, okay, neto, whatever layer we have added here, every layer has been removed in this, okay, destination side. So, here we added with what? Okay, application header, presentation header, session header, transport layer header, network header, everything has been, right? Everything has been removed one by one here. Okay, removed one by one. Finally, data has been reached to the destination here. This complete process, what happened here? is called as encapsulation, where from the here we are doing, right? Adding, adding we are doing, right? Header, header, and all we are adding the header, right? This is called as encapsulation. Removing the header, we are removing the header, right? That is called as what? Decapsulation. Encapsulation process and decapsulation here. The data header has been added in each layer is called as encapsulation. Data encapsulation, data has been removed in each layer is called as data decapsulation. The information which is available that in the physical layer, bits, information which is available in the data link layer, frame, here, packets, next segments. Remaining things is called, called as what? Data only. Okay, so how it look like? How the information look like here? You can see how the, the frame look like. Okay, how the segment look like here. Here, frame. What is the information available there in the frame here? You can see. Okay, uh, FCS, frame check sequence. That is the thing about your tail. Here, source MAC address and destination, right? Here, in the left hand side. Here, MAC address, source MAC address, and destination MAC address available here. Okay, this is completely framed here. Packets, what are the information available in packets here? Source IP, destination IP, protocol, and segment. Okay, then here, source port number, destination port number along the data. So, this information, segment, Complete segment is available there in the packet. Complete packet is available there in the frame. Okay. So finally, the complete frame has been the form of what? Bits. Okay. Very important. The form of bits here. Okay. What is the information available in the segment? We can have to say port source port number, source port and the destination port. What, what is the information available in the packet here? Source IP, destination IP, protocol, other information. What is the information available in the frame here? Source MAC address, destination MAC address. Okay, this information here. Okay, we studied OSM model, right? Are we still using OSM model or not? The question is no, we are not using OSM model. Okay, so why, sir? It's a lot of disadvantage. We have a lot of disadvantage available in OSM model. The OSM model is completely theoretical model, not practical. It's completely theoretical model only. And also, in OSM model, some services are duplicated. I told you already, right? The error correction has been happened by the uh, data link layer. Error, sorry, error detection has been happened by the data link layer. Error correction has been happened by the your physical, uh, your uh, transport layer. Same thing. Error correction, error detection has been happened by the multiple layers also. Okay. So transport layer will do. Okay, as well as data link layer also will do. And also, like uh, when it comes to addressing, multiple addressing. We have network layer, we have IP address available, data link layer, we have MAC address available, multiple addressing available here. Okay, and also the top three layer, like a presentation layer, session layer, and application layer. Session layer, application, presentation available, right? The developer, a programmer, they are not able to segregate the layers. All the layers are combined, small, small only, small chunks in the layer. Okay, they are not able to segregate each services. So, because of that, what they are doing? They combine. All the services, okay, transport layer, not transport, application layer, presentation layer, session layer has been combined to single layer called application layer in TCP IP model, okay. In TCP model, we have only four layers. We have a lot of drawbacks in OSM model. 
to overcome this one we have four lights available okay physical model okay and also in the LAN connection if you are routing optical fiber cable okay the error won't be available there right okay we don't have much error available there but when you go for okay OSI model we are asking us to do data integrity also they have to verify data integrity that is not required at all if you go for optical fiber cable LAN connection it's a high speed right okay not required at all so these are the problem available in your OSI model okay so lot of drawbacks there so that's what we have TCP model available we can TCP IP model has been developed in 1960 itself okay but here we can say four layers are available okay application layer transport layer internet layer and network access layer application layer present station layer has been combined into application layer transport layer there is no change okay we can say okay transport layer only network layer is modified as internet layer okay net data link layer as well as physical layer has been combined into network access layer what are the functionality available there all the functionality comes under transport layer also okay what are the function we studied in transport application layer presentation layer comes under the application layer transport layer transport layer internet layer what are the functionality we studied in network layer comes under the internet layer physical layer and data link has been combined into network access layer So you can see here what is the difference actually between transport layer as well as TCP IP model and OSI model. Okay, TCP IP model is okay more reliable. TC transmission control protocol here OSI open system interconnect model here. Okay, four layers are there, but here seven layers. This one is reliable, more reliable. This is less reliable. Okay. The TCP model does not have very strict boundaries, but here we have strict boundaries available. This is my IDP model nothing but horizontal approach. That's nothing but top to bottom. But TCP IP model is okay. Uh, this is nothing but vertical approach. OSI model is vertical approach. So apart from this, we have other advantage and other advantage as well as difference are available with respect to TCP IP OSI model here. So what are the protocol comes under TCP IP model here? Application layer we have FTP, HTTP, SMTP protocol. Transport layer are also called as post to post layer. TCP and UDP protocol. In turn, we have IP. When you say IP here, all the protocol TCP, UDP, ICP, all comes under here only. Sorry, IP is comes under internet layer. TCP and UDP comes under transport layer. IP station 4, IP 6 all comes under internet layer here. Network access layer, Ethernet. Okay, it's a technology which has been used in network access layer. So, protocol you can see here application layer, HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, FTP, Telnet, TFTP. SSH, SMTP, SNMP, NTP protocol, DNS, DHS, lot of protocols available in TCP protocol, lot of application, a lot of protocols available in application layer. Similarly, we can say here, okay, uh, host to host layer, okay, that is nothing but transport layer, okay, what is the application comes under transport layer, TCP and UDP comes under the application layer here. Internet layer, okay, internet layer is also called a network layer, we have like a routing protocol, router protocol here. Routing protocol when I say uh, RIP, IGRP, EHRP, OSP protocol, router protocol, IP4, IP6, okay. Apart from that, we have ICMP and ERP protocol comes under your internet layer. Network access layer, that is final layer here, okay. Like a protocol or we can say the physical things like a, we can say cables, connectors, interface, all comes under your network access layer. Apart from that, like a Mac layers, all comes at the network access layer only. So, thank you all.